Hey everybody, this is Joseph Smolinski from the Department of Art and Design at the University of New Haven. Uh, I'm here to give you a quick tutorial uh, about a software called Tinkercad. Hey everybody, so this is how you access Tinkercad. Go ahead and just go to google.com, type in Tinkercad search, and locate tinkercad.com. Uh, when you start, you'll need to create a, an account so you simply just need an email address and create a password. Um, once you get to this menu, you can simply create a new design. All right, in Tinkercad, this is the basic layout. Uh, on the right side, you have a menu of basic shapes that you can use. There's a whole menu of all kinds of other things that you can access. I recommend checking that out. Um, and on the left side, you have navigation tools, you have copy and paste palette, uh, and you have a group of other um, functions up at the top. So to start, we drop in an object, like a cube. Uh, you see it places it in setting, gives it a color. We can control um, the length, the width, the height. Uh, we're working right now in millimeters, uh, which is really great for things like 3D printing. Um, a millimeter, um, well, 25 millimeters is roughly about an inch. So if I type in 50, 50, 50, I have a cube that's roughly about two inches by two inches by two inches. Um, in terms of navigation, we can click on this cube for top view. If you click and hold the cube, you can rotate it. Do front view, click and hold. You can also hit control and, and uh, drag anywhere out here and just look around and rotate. Additionally, you can always click on the home button, which brings you back to that solid view. Um, you can zoom in and zoom out these buttons. Uh, you can also hit this, which will fit the view to the group of objects you have selected. Zoom right into there. Uh, and then this gives you <clears throat> an orthographic view over above and then a perspective view um, uh, to be able to access your models. So one thing to consider with this is um, we can simply combine shapes together so we can drag in another model. Um, to scale it, you can scale, um, you know, you can stretch things out, or if you hit the shift key, it will scale in, in proportion with itself. So if I bring, you know, scale this up a little bit, uh, if I move this around, it will stay on the uh, work plane. If I grab this little arrow, I can drag it up. Um, another function that you can do with an object is you can have it be a solid or a whole. In order to use this, if you click on a hole, it will, it will turn it transparent, but it's not necessarily a hole yet. In order to, to make this happen, you have to select everything. You can just drag over it, and you can group the objects. Up here we have a, a palette that allows you to group. So if I click group, it will take that object and it will create a slice out of it. If I undo that, I can move it in a little farther perhaps. Maybe I move it down a little bit and again drag over everything group i have a clear kind of chunk out of the surface um, other ways of using this whole function if i brought in a cylinder for example um, i'm going to make this very tall <clears throat> and then i'm going to move it well actually let me show you this if i uh if i have these two selected okay then i can arrange them together so if i click the align button You'll have a whole group of menu here. Now, if I click, let me just navigate over here so you can see this. If I click this button, it will align them together. So notice how now they are directly in, in line with one another, okay? Uh, the center axis. And then also, if I click this one, it will align them in the, um, the other axis. So now I have the cylinder directly in the middle of the cube. The last thing I'm gonna do is just simply move this uh, a little bit down, let's see here. There we go, I have to click out of the align to do that. So if I take this and move it down, that way it is below the space of the cube and it will cut all the way through. All right, so now it's aligned directly in the middle and I'm just gonna select all of these. Uh, actually, before I do that, I need to make this a hole. All right, select all these guys, group it. All right, and now I have, um, this object with a hole directly through the center. All right, so you can imagine creating positive and negative shapes to create a variety of different types of forms. Um, 
The last thing I'll show you before I close up here is just simple duplication uh, of models. So for example, if I hit this button, it'll duplicate. You won't see anything that happens, but if I move this, there we have it, a twin of that. So again, duplicate one more time, move this out here. And now <clears throat> here you can see that uh, models can get quite complex by simply copy, paste, duplicate. <clears throat> if I select all these, command A, I can group them. And now I have an object that's much more complicated and you can imagine this getting more and more detailed the more I add or subtract from it. Um, so that's the basics of Tinkercad. If you wanted to export this for another application for 3D printing, simply do that here. You click export, you can export as an OBJ. This is a great file format for bringing into 3D animation software, virtual reality software, and other types of software. STL is excellent for 3D printing. You can bring that directly into a slicer and get it ready for 3D printing. So I'm just gonna bring this as an STL because uh, some of my classes are 3D printing right now. So click STL, we'll automatically download it to your downloads and you can take it from there. So that's the basics of Tinkercad. Um, please email if you have any questions. I'm happy to help you out. Uh, there'll be some more coming up soon. So take care and be well.